right? Looking for some love during the holidays can be tough. Now, there's a lot going on between Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, of course. For others, this time could be a chance to rekindle a relationship. But again, it is busy. We have mm -hmm. a lot of stressors this on our true. plate. This is true. So joining us on the couch with the answers to your questions is Certified Relationship and Marriage Coach Jennifer Blankool. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Emily and Travis. Thanks for having me again. Always good to have you on the couch here. Okay, we got some good questions this week. We do. Awesome. The first one comes from Lisa. She writes, how can I find a meaningful relationship outside of dating apps? Ooh, I feel like so many people ask this question. That's a great question. So firstly, stay on the apps. The okay. usage of apps is ever evolving, mm -hmm. so keep it as your backup plan. But to answer your question, put yourself in the mix of things that you love to do. Volunteer, mm -hmm. get involved. Um, join organizations, clubs, social groups that really align with what you love to do, your mm -hmm. interests. Uh, that way you're immersing yourself amongst the kinds of people that would align with your likes and interests. And so uh, get out there, get involved, but don't dismiss the apps. I do feel like we're in a transitioning um, I just feel like usage of the apps is always transitioning, so don't give up on the apps, but mm -hmm. get out there live, immerse yourself amongst the kinds of people and things that, that interest you. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. I mean, yeah. if you're in those groups where it's, you're like-minded, you'd probably yeah. have similar interests. Also, recruit your network to be your matchmakers. Mm -hmm. Let the people that you know professionally and personally that you're single and that you're mm -hmm. looking. Mm -hmm. Once people know, and they get the green light, you'd be amazed how motivated people can be to, right. to match you up. So Sometimes they're just let not your network thinking know. like you're yeah. not in their brain in that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I awesome. like that idea. Yeah. Great question. I like that idea. All right. Yeah. Uh, question number two, also a good one. So this one is from Carla, and Carla asks, How can I restart a flame when your spouse has been busy taking care of his father who has been sick? He isn't able to multitask and remember that he has a wife. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. this is a great question and I feel like a common scenario. So don't lose sight that your husband has good intention, not dismissing the fact that you, you know, your needs deserve to be met, but start with the good intention of your husband. And I will say, you know, coaching couples and individuals about their love relationships and marriages, I think it's human when you're involved in something that takes a lot out of you, it's easy to humanly check the box in your mind that you're doing it all. Mm. Even if it's taking away from your marriage, he might be checking a box in his mind that he's, he's being purposeful, he's working hard, he's contributing to his dad, so all is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes, um, people that are in that position of caretaking for elderly parents, they can forget or they can not even be aware of how that's impacting a spouse. Yeah. So keep with the positive intent of your husband, uh, approaching him with loving requests of what you need and want, and separating the time that he spends taking care of his father uh, with the time that you both spend intentionally as a couple. So uh, having ritualistic date nights where maybe you're not talking about the dad during yeah. that time and you're you're dividing um, the caretaking role with the role of being the husband. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, come at him with love. Um, again, he's he's doing something that's that's hard yeah. and yeah. very loving and uh, he might have just humanly lost sight of how that impacts the whole picture. Well, it's a draining situation, it sounds Absolutely. like, as well. It, no, seems like, it seems like one of those times where I think sometimes, you know, we talk about a, a marriage or a relationship being 50-50. Yeah. I don't think that that's always the case. I think it's sometimes there's going to be, you know, those 60-40, 70-30 stretches. More. You don't want to see that go on forever, obviously. Right. But, uh, yeah, it, it just might be one of those times where you got to be the bolster for a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said. Well yeah. said. It's it's tough, but I mean that's that's tough for the whole family. So yeah. sending love to you, Carla. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're not alone. No, no, no. Your husband and, and his dad. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a good last question here from Nicole. She writes, "How do I know if I'm dating a narcissist? I like challenging men, but it usually doesn't end well." Hmm. That's a good Ooh. question. <laughs> So I do feel like the word narcissist gets thrown around uh -huh. quite a bit. Mm. Uh -huh. I think we, uh, with all due respect, I think we abuse it a little bit in general speak. Uh, to answer your question, narcissism is about a level of selfishness. And we all humanly can be selfish, even, mm -hmm. you know, on uh, 
the early dating stage, we can we can humanly want to talk about ourselves. But if you're dealing with somebody over time where you're seeing a pattern of not interested in you, mm -hmm. not asking questions about you, mm -hmm. uh, they're more focused on them. Uh, perhaps if you go against something that they want you to do, if you go against their way, they can get easily mad. Mm -hmm. If that develops as a pattern, that's a common narcissistic trait. Yeah. Uh, but aside from narcissism as a term, I would follow your gut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't make you feel good, if somebody doesn't leave you feeling like they're interested in you yeah. and they're motivated to get to know you on a deep, meaningful level, just trust your gut and yeah. move on. I think no. for some reason in dating culture, there's this like, there's this want to like seek out challenges, and we see this all the time in, in dating shows. You I was people talk about what, what was meant fighting by that for love, question, or like this yeah. person's worth fighting for. Or like, oh, it's such a, it's so challenging, but we make it work. I don't think you should be with someone that you have <laughs> to it. work that hard to be it. with. <laughs> yeah, you know, I agree. Like, don't fight the ease. It's not boring. Isn't necessarily a bad thing. Mm. Right. 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 And if you're seeing all these things from the get-go, yeah. those are flags that are probably going to stay. Mm -hmm. So don't ignore those signs, yeah. you know? When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. True. 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 Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Well, Jennifer, it's always great to see you. Great awesome advice, to be here. Always. Thanks, Emily and Travis. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Uh, is, is it still cuffing season? Is it still oh, considered cuffing so. season? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, happy cuffing season, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. <laughs> and if you have a question for our relationship expert, you can send us a message right now on the Coin News AM Extra Facebook or Instagram pages. Your question may be answered right here on the show, and you can remain anonymous. Emily, what can people do? Slide into those DMs. Ew. Ew. <laughs> <laughs>